What's up, YouTube? Alex here, aka H95, bringing you guys a deck profile for the new April 2014 list, or ban list, or whatever you guys want to call it. Um, it's Frog Monarchs. I've been working on this deck both uh, at the end of this current format, because we're still technically in it, um, as well as the new format. I tried to make it a pretty budgety deck for the most part. I've just been using playing it, honestly, for fun, like at locals and whatnot. And uh, it's been pretty good. I've really enjoyed playing it. It grinds out a lot. It does go into time a lot if you're not playing correctly. Um, even if you are, sometimes you just inevitably go out of time. It is uh, traditionally a pretty slow deck uh, for the most part, but I'm going to hop straight into it. I have the extra inside as well for you guys. Um, and there's quite a lot of new cards that were released that I think make this card uh, make this deck pretty uh, viable for the most part. But I'm going to hop straight into it. It runs the standard uh, frog engine of three salt frogs. Uh, please, can I make this card a super rare? Um, it, like I said, it's a pretty cheap deck, so I try to make it as low rarity as possible, so, you know... You guys can get an idea of actually how cheap it is as far as um, building it, and it can definitely contend with the meta. I opted to run three dupe frogs. Um, I've always been an advocate of three. Um, out of all the cards in the deck, if I were to ever cut one card, it'd probably be the third dupe frog, potentially for another Ryza, um, which you guys will see later. I only opted to one, ri one Ryza. But the thing with dupe frog is I wanted to have as much food as possible for uh, for Ronin Toten. And I felt that Dupe Frog is just it's it's just a solid body, especially if people are expecting you're playing Gear Gears with like and like if you just go turn one set. Like typically Gear Gears have back rows, but I mean I've had scenarios where they've just gone like set or whatever and it's stolen armor and they just have like a, a fistful of monsters. Um or they think it's like Mermail or some other random dot deck. And it's just it's a great card. And if you can establish two of these really early, um, whether it be both an attack or defense, like there's been a lot of cool plays where I've had like let's say two dupe frogs in a hand in my hand and like a swap frog and maybe like a treeborn or something like kind of a cloggy hand i could go like special swap frog discarding uh treeborn sending ronin toten or whatever to the grave bounce box swap frog uh normal summon dupe frog and then use the swap frog uh normal summon thing to summon the second dupe frog um and it basically creates a marauding captain effect to where they uh they can't they, they can't attack you because they're both on the field so it's a really cool card i think it's an easy side out at the at, at worst so in general, I think it's it's a free plus. The only thing is, sometimes you can make a mistiming, so make sure you're not tributing this for a Monarch. Because um, it is a when and can effect, so it can mistiming pretty easily. Um, but for the most part, it's a really solid card. Uh, two Treeborn Frogs, I've never really had a problem with two. Uh, one run into it, and same thing. Uh, for the Monarchs, I run three Caius. Uh, three Caius is a must. I only won one Ryza. I cut this to one just because... Uh, I don't know, I just, it was always cloggy for some reason, like, out of all the Monarchs, like, I never, especially testing in the new April format, like, obviously it's essentially the same as this format, it's just that water and fire were kind of changed up a bit as far as fire goes, like, they, they're running three axes. I never really wanted to, like, put a, car, a card that I'm, like, that it's on the field that isn't an XYZ or Synchro back to the top of the deck. I'd rather just get rid of it as a whole, which is obviously why I'm maxing on Caius. Um, Ryza is, like... It was subpar, like, I wish there was another Monarch that did exactly what Kaias did, like, that they couldn't use it. Like, I don't know, like, it's alright, like, I, I tried some other options, I'm still back and forth. If I were to add a second rise, I would just cut the dupe frog. But I noticed, uh, sometimes I would get really cloggy hands, and I would, you know, I would not want to have too many Monarchs. And then, like, if they get rid of my one Treeborn, or something along that nature, or my main Tribute Vodder, or my defensive special summoning hand traps, then I won't have Tribute Vodder, and I'll just, I'll just lose the game flat out. Uh, another card that I added from a new format, I did a card review on this, I don't know, hopefully you guys will see it pretty soon, if you guys already haven't seen it, is Mobius the Mega Monarch, so go check out my card review on this. I replaced, uh, the one Mobius in the deck, I, I moved the Mobius to the side deck, um, I wanted to, you know, maximize just removal in general, and this guy's really easy to get out, you just need any two tributes or any one tribute summon monster, but typically... Uh, I'd like to tribute like a Treeborn, like if I have a Monarch from a previous turn on the field, bring back a Treeborn, I could just tribute both, and they can't activate any of those face downs except like, unless it's like a Soul Morning or whatever. Um, and this card's just a blowout card, it's one of those cards, it's almost like full houses, this format. Uh, similarly for my Spirits, I run, uh, here, I'll do Dark Dust Spirit first, I run one Dark Dust Spirit, he's traditional, he's pretty much need him, he's a really good card, just Dark Hole in general, and he's just re reusable all the time. Uh, I love him out unless you consider siding a second one just because like ducks like Bujin's rising in popularity because they haven't been hit. And one Feng Huang. Uh, he's ho -Oh, for you guys who don't know what he is. He's literally a ho. -Oh. He's just another spirit type monster, 2100 by 1800, 6 stars obviously. He's fire and he's a wing beast. Um, basically what he does is he's just like Dark Dust Spirit, except when he's Tribute Summon, 
Uh, both players destroy all face down uh, spell or trap cards on the field. Um, or uh, no, not both players. I'm sorry. It's just opponent controls. So that's. I mean, you don't run any spells and traps really that are going to be set at set on the field because you want to get your treeborn frogs going. Uh, but it's a. Uh, it's definitely a solid effect. It's another blowout card like Mega Mobius. Like if they don't have an answer for this, even if they have like Fiendish Chain, you can just like space or whatever and then just keep going. Um, and it and it's reusable. So it's like honestly, the fact that I don't have that other eyes isn't really a problem because like even if they don't have like any background, I can just keep tribute summoning these things with, for free with Treeborns and just keep attacking turn over turn over turn. And it's a really solid card. Um, I only run one LED, one LADD. Uh, one seemed to be enough. I don't think I would ever really run two. Well, mostly just because in my area, for some reason, I don't know if I'm like a trend starter or some shit, but like, I went in there one day and there was fucking like four other Frog Monarch players, and I've never seen anyone else play like Frog Monarchs at my locals. So, out of like 60 people, that was kind of annoying. I just, I just cut one, and it was fine. Like, honestly, I, I had this dead occasionally, so there's a lot of like chaining that people could do, like, with everybody like maxing Fiendish Chains, and like, they could go like Space and then Chain Fiendish Chain or whatever, like, or like on another back row where they could go Fiendish Chain Space, you know, just, just, or not, not Chain Space, but like in general, there's just like just chains they could do to stop this card and it's just not as effective as it used to be. But when you do get this off in a simplified game state, it, it just auto wins. It's a blowout card. Uh, for my hand traps, uh, I was initially running two Maxis, two Veilers, or a mixed match of both. I opted to just go with two Veilers in the main deck rather than Maxis. Um, because, for, like, max ease, you want to draw into, like, your defensive stuff for the most part, or you're trying to get your opponent to stop, and you run enough defensive stuff to where you're likely going to draw it, and Valor's just a supplementary thing to, like, negate stuff, and typically, if they're going for game, Valor's probably going to be able to hinder them a little bit, whether it be, like, an armor, whether, uh, stopping an armor, whether it be stopping in a tomb, whether it be, you know, just stopping whatever, um, and it's a great card because you can make, uh, you can make, uh, Formula Synchron into Scrap Dragon, or you can make Black Rose with a Monarch, so, it's just a added incentive, a lot of the time you could, you know, use it with stuff, you can also exceed with it, worst case scenario, there's a lot of cool rank 1 exceeds that are really good now, and playable, that have been released in the new sets, so, Baylor's pretty cool, uh, traditionally, standard 3 Battle Faders, 1 Gores, I cut Trigodia to 1, Trigodia's playability kind of diminished, just like I said, because of all the Fiendish Chains, and, uh, in general, like, there's so many plays that people could do to just run this over. Like, the fact that it doesn't have, like, a body all the time is what sucks, and it, it's terrible in a simplified game state. Um, but there are some cool plays you could still do that you could still steal occasional no monsters. I don't, like, it's very rare that you're going to be playing an opposing deck that has, like, sixes and one whatnot in it, or twos or ones. So it's, the fact that you don't have, like, threes and fours, which is, Typically, like, threes and fours are going to be, like, the most common monsters on the field. Just, like, monsters by themselves. Um, kind of sucks because you won't be able to use the steel effect a lot. But it is still a really powerful card, and I think uh, I think one is still warranted. Um, I replaced the second one with uh, Jack Frost. Uh, you guys should definitely check out my card review on this. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, please go check it out. This card is really cool in this deck. Um, it's great against decks like Bujins, which this deck sometimes struggles against if you don't draw your stuff that you need. And it's also fantastic because it's level one. You can make... Uh, some of the exceeds, which I'll show you later, like Ghost Trick, uh, Dullahan, um, number Utopia Roots, or Slacker Magician, and you can just keep recycling this guy, and he's just really cool, and it sets it, and he's just another tribute fodder, so he's, he offers a lot of plays, I, I side a second one, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I side a second one, yeah, I do, I have the second one on the side, so he's a really cool card, he's, he's just like another battle fighter almost, especially like, against slow decks, which I love, I absolutely love this guy, he's so cute, look at that, look at that little snowman face, <laughs> Uh, I strove for mainly, for mainly consistency in this deck more than anything else, which is why I obviously cut, like, the Monarchs, and I opted to run two card Cardis in the main deck. I found myself, uh, like, the games that I was losing, either I would just have, like, a really shitty hand of, like, like, double Econ, double Soul Exchange, um, well, that's not really shitty hand to, like, big fields, but, like, or established boards, but, like, really shitty hands are just, like, let's say, like, a Treeborn Frog, maybe, like... I don't know, a Valor, a Battle Fader, I don't know, two Soul Exchanges, an MST, you know, just like, just weird combinations, and that that's maybe just me, or just like really cloggy hands, and Card Card D just gets you there, gets you through your engine, um, and if you, like, the only other times you're losing is when you're just seeing your engine and you're not seeing Monarchs, or vice versa, so Card Card D kind of just gives you that extra pluses, especially this deck, there's so many times where you're just passing turns, where you're just like sitting on frogs or whatever, and you're not going aggressively, and those turns, you could be drawing into more answers with Card Card D, and it's just a fantastic card. And the fact that it's level 2, you don't care if they Valor you or um, whatnot, because if they're Valoring this, 
that means they're not veiling a monarch. And if they're not veiling a monarch, you're going to get pluses off of that. And if they're veiling this, on top of that, you could just exceed with like Ronin Toten or Dupe Frog or Swap Frog or anything along that nature. And you can make Gachi, you can make, uh, can you, I'm pretty sure you can make this guy. Uh, yeah, you can make Armored Kappa, uh, you can make Digusto Phoenix, you can make Herald of Pure Light and recycle all your stuff. There's a lot of options with this. And I think, I think Card Card D is a really great supplement to this deck. For the spells, I run three Soul Exchange, pretty obvious. Like, I want to maximize on like all stuff that just breaks up boards. Like, I want to have stuff that's good against established boards and is good against um, starting up my own boards. So, um, these are all must. Three cons, three Soul Exchange. Uh, I opted to run two creature swaps. Uh, fuck Bujins. Uh, this card is absolutely amazing. Oops, why am I showing you guys aside? Uh, it's ridiculous. So, like, giving them free dupe frogs, which is another reason I like three dupe frogs, because, like, it's just another card that you can keep giving them and get pluses and attacking. You can suicide your treeborns into it, get pluses. You could, uh, there's just so many crazy things you can do. Like, if you bring out a battle fader and they just have, like, a big-ass monster, you can just put this in attack mode, creature swap, give them battle fader and attack with theirs. Um, there's just a ton of cool plays. Creature swap is amazing, and it's almost like, uh, how it was at the beginning of this previous format with Mermels running it. Um, I don't really know, like, they dropped it for obvious reasons, just for consistency, and there's just better options, but I think this coming format, this card's gonna, the, this card's gonna be really, really good, in my opinion, um, and it just breaks up boards, um, it puts your opponent in a really shitty position, especially because this card does not target, which is fantastic, so, there's a lot of cool options, like, I just love being able to disrupt boards, and that's the point of this deck, it's a disruptive type deck, one dark hole, uh, three mystical space typhoons, I might cut one and move it to the side for, uh, a trap stun, which I initially had, but uh, I think their MST is pretty solid. Like it's it's just good against like fiendish chains and like shitty face downs. Like for some reason, there's a lot of evil swarm in my area. I don't know why that deck hasn't been hit for like the third straight list or whatever. But uh, yeah, evil swarms like it's annoying when they have like safe zone. Like this is that's not the reason why I play MST for obvious reasons, but it's just, it's just the best. Um, the one trap I run is torrential. Uh, I initially had a trap stun in here. Uh, I just left it as torrential i felt torrential is far better than cards like treacherous trap hole because this is more chainable when you can do it on one monster in a losing situation and on top of that it's just like it doesn't target which i absolutely love and torrential is just it's a power card like if anything i want to run this over anything else like i would consider telling morning maybe but i think this is much better especially with cards like dupe frog and whatnot in the deck and like if they go fiendish chain on a monarch i've done torrential to make my monarch still work um like there's a lot, there's a lot of fantastic plays, and torrential, torrential is just amazing. Like I would definitely run it for the extra deck. Uh, like I said, it's 17 cards, uh, but you guys can. I'll show you guys some cards I'm thinking about cutting out or changing up. First one is Ghost Trick Dullahan. I'm definitely considering adding a second one. Uh, he's a new card from the new set, and basically he gains 200 attack for each Ghost Trick card I control. So he's oh, in this deck. It's just gonna be him. Basically, you're probably just gonna have him on board. Um, you're never gonna have him in like a Ghost Frost or the Ghost Trick. Frost guy, the Jack Frost guy on the field, but so he's pretty much always going to be 1200. Um, basically, essentially, what he is is he's a Gale during either player's turn, so he's a quick effect, and you can use him during a uh, damage step. You can't use him during damage calculation, but you can use him during damage step. Um, you detach a material from him, and then you half a monster on the field's attack, and it's until that end phase. So basically, anything that is 2200 or lower, he can get over, if I'm not mistaken. So if it's if it's over 2200 he won't be able to kill it but most monsters you'll be able to kill with this for the most part like unless it's like something fucking like gigantic or just it's just like a big power monster or power card um he's really cool and his last effect is if he's sent to the graveyard so in any way you can target one other ghost trick card in your graveyard and add it to your hand um which the only other one you run uh both in a main and side is ghost trick drag so you can just recycle him um, I haven't I haven't been able to find a ruling. If I have uh, a Dulahan in my grave and a Dulahan dies, if I send, can I bring back that Dulahan back to that deck? Because I know it says to hand, but it's not a cost for uh, for a cost for it. Like it's kind of like compulsory from what I understand. Then it'll go back to the extra deck. So I'm pretty sure you're able to keep recycling him and just keep doing it over and over and over. So uh, Dulahan's really cool. I'm, I gotta definitely figure out if I want to add in a second one. Uh, I run a Utopia Roots. He's one of the cards I'd consider cutting. He's basically a rank one Utopia. Uh, during other players' turn, obviously. The only thing is, uh, he has kind of weak attack, but if he negates uh, an XYZ monster's attack, he gains attack equal to that monster's rank times 500. So if he negates like a rank 4 monster's attack, he'll gain 20, uh, 2,000. He'll gain uh, he'll gain that, so it'll be a 2,500 beater. Um, and that attack will be permanent, obviously. So 
Uh, Slacker Magician, another one that's been kind of cool when I didn't have uh, Dulahan. I'm considering cutting her, but I like the defense. She basically can't be destroyed uh, once. Uh, she can't be destroyed by battle once per turn. And then during other player's turn, if she's uh, targeted uh, as a face-up card, you can detach a material from this card and then negate the activation if you do destroy that card. So she's kind of like a mini rank one gachi, so she has options. Armored Kappa, uh, kind of like a gachi, although I like that you can immediately detach for him, like putting a Ronin Toad in a grave. You don't have to wait for them to you know, pop a gachi if you use the Ronin Toad in for it. And on top of that, he's a Wabaku. Um, a, a, a Wabaku uh, during either player's turn, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's during either player's turn. Yeah, so during either player's turn, it's a Wabaku. So that's really, really important. Um, it can save you. I've, I've won a game because of this in time, just because I made this, and then they couldn't kill me next turn. So he's fantastic. You just sit on him. Gachi, for obvious reasons. The Gusto Phoenix, obvious, pushing in. Uh, Herald of Pure Light, he's really cool. Uh, for these of you guys that don't know what he does, you can detach a material from him, and then you pick a monster in your grave, add it to your hand, and then you shuffle one card from your hand into the deck, and you can only use his effect once per turn. The most important thing about him is you can recycle cards. Uh, it does, by the way, it doesn't necessarily have to be a monster. For uh, you, I mean, obviously you add a monster back from your grave to hand, but then the card that you shuffle back doesn't have to be a monster. So I'll just keep that in mind. I find myself uh, recycling cards like Gores, uh, Effect Veilers, and more than often I find myself recycling Caius's. That's probably the most uh, frequent thing that you'll be recycling. If he stays on board for more than one turn, uh, you're definitely going to be getting pluses off of him. So, really cool card, and you have to run it. Downward Magician, another really cool new card uh, from Legacy of the Valiant. It's a rank 4 Gaia Charger, essentially, for anything that's uh, rank 3 or below. So, if you make any of these guys right here, you can just overlay it on top of this. So, one of the coolest things is, if you use Dual Han's effect twice... And then you overlay for her in main phase 2, which the only time you can over use her Guy Charger overlay thing is main phase 2. And basically she's a piercer as long as she has materials. And then if she she gains attack for each material that's attached to it. So if Dulhan did have a material, you would have two materials under her. Um, every time she attacks or is attacked, you have to detach a material after damage calculation. And then obviously she does piercing as long as she only has that. But the coolest part is if you detach a Dulahan, uh, he doesn't have to be on the field. It's just sent to grave. You can still recycle like a Jack Frost with him. So she's a cool, you know, beater. She's 2100. And I think she's uh, she's going to increase in playability the more and more rank 3 or lowers are released. Uh, for my rank 6s, I run Force Focus. Uh, cool plays with this. Uh, I like being able to get around. I did a really cool play to get around a Leo and a Gaios. Uh, I had two Econs uh, where my opponent uh, couldn't negate this with Gaios. And during his main phase 2, I went fo Force Focus to negate the Leo, because uh, he's level 5 or higher. And then I went Econ, take the thing, and then Econ, Econ Tribute Leo, take the Gaios. And I could deal with Gaios next turn, so it didn't really matter. But this is a really cool card. It's 2800, which is probably the most important thing. It's a, it's a quick effect, so it's it's definitely a card I would run. Gauntlet Launcher, uh, he kind of replaces Exabeetle, um, although I still run him, I think I might start cutting Ex I might cut Exabeetle, uh, I think this is one I'm going to cut, he's basically a double Scrap Dragon, he's like a one time Scrap Dragon, um, and I like him better just because he has better overall stats and you can use him twice, so I don't know, I'm probably going to cut Exabeetle, uh, Strike Bounds are absolute must, he's like a Dolka, uh, this is supposed to be an M7, unfortunately I couldn't find one for the filming of this video, but M7 is absolutely necessary, um, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's Constellar, Ptolemy's M7, that's the full name of this, so that's supposed to be a, uh, M7. Uh, one Guy Charger, and then for the Synchros, I run one Formula Synchro, and one Black Rose, and one Scrap Dragon. I felt these were the most necessary. The only other one I would consider is uh, Crimson Blader, but I think these suffice enough, because you could always just go this into this, um, where you could just go Effect Veiler into, uh, plus Monarch into Black Rose. So I felt these were the most solid ones. So realistically, I'd probably cut Exit Beetle, and either Slacker Magician or Utopia Roots, probably one of these. If I cut both, all three of these, I'd probably add in like another Dulahan or something. Um, or I would just keep one of these, and I'm not entirely sure yet. But the extra deck's kind of flexible. This is, I believe this is 17 extra deck cards right now. So you guys can work that out the way you want. Uh, the side deck, I'll just kind of show it to you what I've been working with for the most part in new format. But uh, you can definitely change it up to what you feel is necessary. I don't really believe in showing off side decks because it's to each his own, really. Uh, two, the two Maxis, two DD Crows, another Jack Frost. This card is just savage against Bujins. There's a lot of Bujins in my area, and you guys obviously know I hate that deck with a passion. Especially now everybody's finally starting to hate it for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, this card's great because like if they go like, like Yamato, um, and they don't really have anything in grave. This card doesn't target. It affects the, uh, the, affects the monster from what I understand. It doesn't like, it's like Scarecrow. It doesn't, 
target itself. So like if they attack with Yamato or whatever, um, and they have like hair or, cr or the turtle thing in the grave, and you book uh, their thing, you bring this out in defense, and their monster goes face down. They won't send during end phase, and then they won't be able to use their shit. So you can just like tribute for a monarch next turn. So he's really cool, or you could exceed with him. Like there's a lot of cool plays, and uh, I just love this guy. It's just another defensive card. Uh, two fossil dinos for Girgia and dragons. Uh, when those decks outspeed you, that's really all you need. This oh, and evil swarms. That is a bitch of a deck because for some reason that deck is a real deck. Um, you can set this and just kill Ophion. Uh, I side deck the Mobius. I might cut this for a third Dino or something else. I'm not really sure yet. Uh, two end of Anubis. This just shuts down Mermails. It kind of hinders uh, Bujins because they can't... It, basically what he does is he's a 2500 by 0 beater. He's 6 stars so you can exceed with him obviously. Um, as long as he remains face up on the field, all effects of spell, trap, and monster cards that target or target car a, a card or cards in the graveyard or that activate in the grave are negated. So it stops all the Bujin stuff in grave. stops Mermails, grave plays, although Gundy's at 1 now. Um, it stops some of the heretic plays, uh, from what I understand. Uh, overall, he's a cool card. I, I really like him a lot. Although you can't, like, Treeborn under him, most of the time, it's fine. Like, if they get rid of him, you'll, you'll have advantage, and you'll just be able to do all your shit. Two Vanities Fiends for, uh, Girgias, for Mermails, and for heretics or dragons in general. Uh, one Twister and one Malcat. These are the only, like... I had two Twisters, I had two Malcats, and I just felt one and one was fine. It was just, just personal preference. Um, just to deal with, like, back rows and whatnot. Um, or heavy back rows after you clear back rows, after you bait them with, like, Monarchs. And a third Creature Swab because, uh, yeah, fuck Bujins. Uh, no, not just for Bujins. Just in general, I absolutely love this card. Like, I, I almost want to main three of these, but I know it gets cloggy, and I know, like, against certain decks, I do want to see this card a lot, especially going second. So Creature Swab is just fantastic. I absolutely love this card. Um, so, yeah. That's the deck profile. I apologize it was so long. But those are my videos as usual. I'm going to flash through the deck again. Uh, that's an M7. I, like I said, I'm sorry. If you guys have an M7, let me know. I don't really care what rarity, but if you guys have an M7, I actually actually want to pick some up. Um, so yeah, that's the deck. Let me know what you guys thought of it. If you guys enjoyed it, give this video a thumbs up. Um, like I said, it's a really cheap deck to make. You guys can obviously tell I tried to make this as low rarity as possible. Unfortunately, I couldn't find everything lowest rarity. Um, the only, like, really expensive stuff is probably in the extra deck, and even that, it's not, like, even that, it's not, like, insanely expensive. Um, everything's pretty much, you could get common or rare or, you know, something along that nature. <coughs> Excuse me. So, that is the deck. Let me know what you guys thought of it again. Uh, check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook fan page. Um, all that in the description along with Alter Reality Games events links down below. Check out when there's another ARGCS or 1K near, near closest to you in your area. Um, I'll see you guys at YCS Vegas and hopefully, uh, Reno, or not Reno Regionals, uh, San Jose Regionals. And, uh, yeah, later guys, peace, thumbs up, later, check out my other videos.